fears. Jesus never fears. Heaven earthly person. Jesus never. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus never Jesus never fears. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus never. Hallelujah. Jesus never fears. Hallelujah. Jesus never fears. Heaven and me pass away, but Jesus never fears. Jesus never fears. Hallelujah. Jesus never fears. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus never fears. I want us to open our mouth and say, God, you never fail. I want you to open your mouth and say, Jesus, you never fail. I want you to open your mouth and say, the Holy Ghost, you never fail. And you will never fail. Hallelujah. In my life, you never fail. In my family life, you will never fail. In my ministry, you will never fail. In the life of my beloved ones, you never fail. Father, you never open your mouth and say, God, I give you praise, I give you glory, for you will never fail. We continue to say it we continue to confess it. We continue to talk about your inability to fail. I mean, you cannot fail. You can never fail. It is not in our agenda to fail. Yes, heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus, you never fail. You are the one of yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, you said even the people of the Jews, I mean the Jews, you said destroy this temple. You will resist. You will resist after three days. Today, that is history. Father Lord, we thank you because you never fail. Hallelujah. Lord God, you promised the people of Israel. Yes, the land of honey. Yes. yes, hallelujah. Father Lord, today, that is history. Father Lord, in our lives, we have your fulfilled promises. Yes, that we can count today and we cannot count all. Father Lord, we Thank you, because you never fail. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I want to welcome every one of you here today in this service. I want you to know God will never fail you as far as you continue to talk, you continue to confess, you continue to say what he has said in your life. You continue to talk about it and rely on it. I mean, rely on what God has said in your life, confessing it before men, confessing it before God, that God will never fail you. And you will realize that he will never fail you. And he will never fail you in your life. Hallelujah. You are welcome once again to this service today. Today, I will continue on in my series. 
the prophetics of your confession. The prophetics of your confession. I want you to know there is power in confession. There is power in confession. Let me tell you, as a nation, as a nation, a nation is what is what he has confessed to be. As people in any given nation, we are what we confess in any nation. I want you to know, my beloved brother, the man of God, Austin Okubo, let me tell us that we are what we confess to be. <laughs> Your name is Austin Okubo. My name is Monday Alola. Because I told you that is my name, and you have no option. You can't change my name. I know that as I know my name. That is why I'm calling you my big brother Austin today because you are you have said it, you have confessed it anywhere you go. When they ask question, you that's what you say, and that is what people are calling you today. I want us to know in these brokers, a nation is what he has confessed to be. I am what I confess to be. You are what you confess. To be what you confess yourself to be is what you are. Last time we met here, we discovered life and death. Life in what we confess, lied in our tongue. What we say we either make us or man us. But we pray today, that is why we are here. What we say we make us this year is a year of increase more and more by our father, Papa Omobudi. He said, this year is a year of increase more and more. Yes, in our own little corner, God told us it's a year of increase more and more of what? of a global blessing. God has a global assignment for you. He must increase you. He must give you global blessings. There is a man we read his book. He said this year is a year of performance. Let me tell you, if you have been performing this year, it's extraordinary. This year, God will perform the increase he has in your life. God will establish you on the platform global. I mean, on the global platform in your life. Let me tell you, people are talking about Japan, Japan in many countries today. This year, more Japan, more Japan will take place. More, more Japan will play, take place. There are many reasons. People leave any country they leave. There are many reasons God can tell you to move from where you are. Let me tell you, according to Archbishop Benson Idahosa, our father, Papa Pentecost, Pentecost, Papa Pentecost of Africa. When they asked him, I told you this story before. Maybe you have heard it from somewhere before. When they asked him to contest as a president of Nigeria, he said to the journalist, told everybody there, he said Nigeria is a parish because in his ministry, Paris is the lowest level after uh, the year before the branch of, of his church. We have parish, we have districts. I don't know now. Hallelujah. He said, he said, Nigeria is a parish. Let me tell you something. Where you are now is a parish. God has assembled you in heaven to dispatch to the nations of the world. That is our bishop again, our bishop Bessie Dahosa. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, he made you in heaven, assemble you here to dispatch 
church to the whole world. He said, that is your confession. That is my confession. That should be our confession. Hallelujah. Where you are, I don't care where you are, whether you are in America, you are in Europe, you are in third world, you are in fourth world, you are in first world, no matter the world you are, where you are right now, is what? Nothing but a parish. God has sent you to the nations of the world. Many jackpots will take place. So many, many. I don't care the country you live. That is not your bus stop. Yes, that is not your national bus stop. In life, God has given you a global assignment that is needed in every part of the world. Hallelujah. It talks about where your foot step into is your possession. Hallelujah. Let me start again from where I stopped the other time. You know, Jesus was talking about the confession of resurrection. Mm. I don't know where you need resurrection today, but one thing about resurrection is your ability to confess that you have the resurrection God has given to you in your life, it will manifest, it will take place. No matter the years, don't talk about the years. You are not older than God. <laughs> you are not older than Abraham. You know, when people are old, they say, I old. When people are young, they say, I young. No one, you know, I'm Bishop Bessie, that was I quote again. He said, one day he went abroad and he came back home. Listen. He said, Mama said to him, he brought out newspaper and showed front page, Dausa had done this, Dausa had done this, Dausa had done this. He said, What Mama asked Papa, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I'm saying this to you so that you continue to say what you are saying about God. Not to leave. No matter the situations. No matter the challenges. Continue. Papa Idahosa said to Mama Idahosa. Do you know what, what he said? He said, God say we should do more. <laughs> God said we should do more. Because Mama Idaosa was asking Papa Idaosa, what are we going to do? Confession is what what I'm talking about today. Don't break your confession. Jesus was talking about the prophecies of confession. Talk, talking about the resurrection. In, in Matthew chapter 22, that's what I, where I stopped last time we came here, just to give summary of what we said. Matthew chapter 22, 28 to 32, it's about some people came to Jesus disputing the confession of Jesus. Jesus telling them, I will be the temple. Within three days, after three days, kill him. After two days, I will resurrect from them. Boldly confessing that there is resurrection. Some people came and said, Jesus, you said there is resurrection, no. But I know a woman, people said. They said, this woman married seven times. Married first one died, second died, third died, till seven men. And they all dead. He said, in the resurrection, who will now marry 
this woman. Jesus told them in verse 28. In verse 28, he said, Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus 29 answered and said unto them, You do err. May you not err in your confession in Jesus' name. May you not err by stopping your confession in Jesus' name. May you not err because people want to talk you out of your confession in Jesus' name. You say you don't know the scripture. May you know the scripture. May you know the scripture. Scripture, but because he take the the scripture to make confession of the scripture. If you don't know the scripture, you can't confess the scripture. He said, "They don't know the power of God." Uh -huh. If you don't know the power of God, you cannot confess the power of God. Today, I ask, you will not. End you will know the scripture. You will know the power of God in your life. Jesus told them. For in the resurrection, they neither marry. Nor are given in marriage. Hallelujah. They never marry. And neither are they given in a marriage. Get that understanding today in the name of Jesus. Get that understanding that in the resurrection there is no marriage. Hallelujah. I will go further on that. But let me prophesy to your marriage life. I don't care what is happening in your marriage life today. Your marriage is being threatened. There are many challenges in your marriage. Many, many of can't, but I can't start counting them right now. There are many, but I want you to know you are surviving all of them. You are surviving all of them. No matter the criticality that issue is, you are having victory over every one of them. Because you cannot confess Christ and see shame in your life. <laughs> those who want to, those who want you to see shame in your life because of what you are confessing about God, about His words, about His power, about His anointing over your life, they are the one that you will see their shame. You will see their shame. You will see their shame because. Those those who believe in Jesus Christ can never be put to shame. Hallelujah. So, I command the resurrection in your marriage and family life in Jesus' name. You know? Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. In verse 30, that's where I'm starting today. In verse 30 of the above above a uh, scripture that is Matthew chapter 22 verse that is verses 22 Matthew 22 verse 29 that's where I, uh, uh, I just said I finished that one but I'm starting in verse 30 Matthew 22 30 are you there Matthew 22 30. I want you to go there. Are you there? My beloved sister, Aduko, I hope you are there with your Bible right now. You are welcome to this program today. You are welcome to this service today. I see you confessing the greatness of God in your life. I, let me tell you, as I speak right now, I see the angel of God bringing something great into your life that you will confess that this is the greatness of God. Hallelujah. If you hear me, I want you to say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
In verse 30 of, of Matthew chapter 22, the Bible says, For in the resurrection they never marry nor are given in marriage. Please, I'm saying this thing now because I want to point out a point. I want to make a point in this area. Be careful what you say about marriage after the resurrection. I want you to understand that there shall be no, no marriage, no marriage. Don't be deceived. There, there is no marriage after the resurrection. I believe God will help you to understand that. And I prophesy that you will receive that understanding today. That there is no marriage. It's a confession. A confession that is that there is no marriage after what? The resurrection. Yes. You know, in the Bible days, as we are seeing in verse 22, some people are still making that error, making that mistake today. They are still making that mistake. They are still talking. They are still confessing. We are going to marry numbers of virgins <laughs> as wives. We are going to marry virgins, numbers of them. The resurrection. After you get to heaven, there is no marriage. I prophesy, you will not make the error of your fathers. The errors in the early days of your life. Hallelujah. You will not make that error. Brother Boniface, I say you will not make error. You will not make a pardonable error. You will not make any mistake that cannot be remedied. In your life, it is an error to think that in heaven you are going to be marrying attending wedding ceremony and be giving birth it's a lie some people are so crazy so mad about marriage today they can do anything some people are being lured with money in terms of marriage is Tells us husband and wife giving birth. If you see stories, people who want to give birth, buying human beings. A lot of story going on today. Hallelujah. Don't be deceived. Anything about marriage. Don't be deceived about marriage. Don't allow marriage to be clouded the love of God in your life. Destroy the love of God in your life. That is our confession. Hallelujah. There is nothing like going to marry numbers of wife, virgins, after the resurrection. It's an error. The Bible says in verse 29 again, concluding this verse 29, it says, are given in marriage. In the resurrection, nobody is being given in marriage. You will not be given in marriage. I will not be given in marriage. I just 
pray and I believe as I prophesy, you will not be given in marriage. You will not, because of marriage, destroy your resurrection. Hallelujah. Confess the resurrection in your life here on earth. There's no resurrection in heaven. It's here. It's only here we talk about marriage. And if there's any an ugly situation, ugly situations in your marriage, he said we need the reason not not over there that is our confession hallelujah nobody will be allowed to marry in heaven nobody will be allowed. what 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 a mistake what an error give your name of pardonable error to believe and be talking about heaven and marriage. Understand that nobody will be allowed to marry when he gets to heaven. Get the understanding today in Jesus' name. The Bible says clearly, but as, as the angels of God in heaven, Matthew 22, Verse 30, 29 to 30. He said, we will be like angels. I command that spirit to be like angels in form of holiness, in form of staying in the presence of God, in form of their strength, in form of their the way, I mean, they are many, uncountable, in life. Hallelujah. Angelic strength. Hallelujah. I just pray, you will be, and I prophesy it to you, you will be like an angel, even in this life. Angels will have something to do in your life. Angels assignment will manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. Yes, I prophesy the manifestation of the angels of God in your life in Jesus' name. Quickly, let me tell you something. What we confess about marriage, about the resurrection, about marriage, is that the only marriage that will take place in heaven after the resurrection, in the book of Revelation chapter 19, 7 and 9, talks about the marriage of the Lamb. Hallelujah. The marriage of the Lamb. He says the Lamb book. Today, I confess that every time. Father, in the name of Jesus, help me to experience, help me to experience the marriage of the Lamb, the marriage of the Lamb. Help me to experience the marriage of the Lamb. You can't be confessing the, the marriage of the Lamb. You can't be praying and believing and hoping about the marriage of the Lamb and your marriage here on earth is destroyed. No, 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 no way. The prayer of Jesus Christ will be fulfilled as it is heaven. Let it be done. Here. I prophesy the marriage of the Lamb will reflect your marriage here on earth today in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that you receive the marriage of the Lamb in your life. You will experience the marriage of the Lamb in the name of Jesus. Well, from what we have seen in the prophetic of the confession in our lives, 
what we confess, what we talk about, what we discuss in our life. That's what I mean when I talk about the prophetics of your, of your confession, of the confession in our life. I'm talking about what we talk about, what we discuss, what we say, what we confess about for this point. The marriage of the Lamb. The marriage of the Lamb. That's what I'm saying. Look, let me tell you. Some of you are here. You say you cannot marry because you don't have money. You don't have house. You don't have furniture. You don't. It doesn't take money, furniture, house to marry. In the prophetics, in the spirit world, it does not take money, it does not take things. It takes affection, it takes love. It takes love to marry. I want you to know that. It takes marriage, it takes the love of God to marry. It takes the love of God to get married. It takes the love of God to have a relationship with God and with man, with your spouse in your life. That is what it takes to marry in life. It takes the love of God to marry. So the only marriage that will take place, the only marriage that will take place in heaven, as far as the scripture is concerned, is the marriage of the Lamb. The marriage of the Lamb. And I pray and I prophesy even in this service today, that you will experience the marriage of the Lamb in your life in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead. We are talking about the prophetics of the confession in our lives, of our confession. What do we confess in life? What do we talk about in life? What do we discuss in life? We have discovered the only marriage that will take place in heaven is the marriage of the Lamb. But if you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, 23 to 33, you will see there, I, I want to pause a, a bit so that you can go there. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 Verse 33. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 to 33. If, if you read there, that will not permit me to read it. Write it down so that you can cross check it at all. If you get there, you will discover that no matter who you are in this service today, you are a spouse. Jesus, you are the spouse of Jesus. You are the spouse of Jesus. If you say chapter 5, 23 to 33, that place declare you as the spouse of Jesus Christ. Today, I prophesy that you are the spouse of Jesus Christ, of Christ in your life. I want you to pray that God should give you that understanding. Are you a man here? Are you a woman here? Get your understanding that you are a spouse to Jesus Christ. 
Whether you are a man, so that you know how to order your step in your marriage life here, in your relationship here. If you are a woman here in this service today, know how to order your step in your marriage life today. Because you are the very spouse to Jesus Christ. In your life, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, help me to understand that I am the spouse of Christ in my life. I am the spouse of Christ in my life. I am the spouse of Christ in my life. I am the spouse of Christ in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The very spouse of Jesus Christ. The very spouse of Jesus Christ. You are the one. The only, you only as the spouse of Jesus. Jesus is not polygamous human being. He's not a polygamous Jesus. He has one wife. Hallelujah. So you are the very wife of Jesus. Jesus is married to the church. And you are the church of Jesus Christ. That is our confession. Hallelujah. That is our confession in life. We confess that we are the spouse, the spouse of Jesus. You see, here as we have been hearing, I want you to know what I've been saying here says is that Christ is one's husband here on earth. Christ is the husband of anyone in the church. The husband of the church is not in the individual member of the church. The church, the called out body of Christ. Let me tell you, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 to, 30, to 33. Ephesians chapter 5, 23 to 33. If you read there, you know that Christ is your own spouse. Christ is your own husband. Christ is your own husband. As far you are in the church. As far you are in the church. I don't care the congregation you belong to. I don't care the name you belong to. As far is the church that Christ died for. Jesus is your spouse. The husband you have. Hallelujah. Father, help me to know that. Help me to know that, too, that Jesus Christ is my husband here. He's my own spouse. In the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 says, Christ is the head. You see that? Christ being the husband is the head. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. Christ is the head. That's what the Bible says. Christ is the head of your life. Christ is the head in your life. That's what I confess. That is my prophecy to you today. Yes, our confession is that Jesus is our head. Is our head. Christ is our head. Hallelujah. What opportunity to be to, to see that Jesus Christ is our head. I want you to 
to open your mouth and say, God, help me to understand that that Christ is the head in my life. Christ is the head in my life. Christ is the head in my life. Open your mouth and say, God, I give you praise, I give you glory. Christ is the head. You, you know, it's an opportunity for you to have Jesus Christ as your head because head gives direction to the body. Head gives direction to the body. I'm not underrating the body because without the body, there is no head. What opportunity to be a body, the body of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the head why we are the body, a privilege. Hallelujah. I want to end it here by telling you Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Kepasita la burubu buli baba la bala bala. Ukulu kule kele ke kala kutu kote sandala ba. Are you there? Ura ba santa la burubu buli baba ba. Yeke santa la buru kote li baba. Revelation nineteen verse seven. He talks about his wife has made herself ready. You see, I don't want these words to depart from your mouth. I mean, I want you to continue to confess that Jesus Christ is your spouse. That Jesus Christ is your husband. That Jesus Christ is your head. Right now, what is happening that as a child of God as a believer, Holy Ghost feed as you are. You are being prepared, no matter what is going on, no matter what people say about you, no matter how you are feeling, no matter what you have or you don't have, God is preparing you for Jesus. And the Bible says, and his wife has made herself ready. You are preparing yourself for that lamb, for that marriage of the lamb. In the name of Jesus. Let me use this opportunity to prophesy to somebody who says it's not possible for him or her to get married at this point in time. I want you to know your being here today is not by accident. God by himself, by his divine power, have prepared your spouse for you. It is for you in this service today to confess it, that your spouse has been prepared for you, that you have been prepared for your spouse. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray that prayer. Father, you have prepared me for my spouse. You have prepared my spouse for me. In the name of Jesus, Father Lord, you have prepared my spouse for me. You have prepared me for my spouse. Pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. You are here, especially you, who is here right now. Or you know anybody that is saying it is it, it's very difficult to get married because of this, because of that. Hey, especially now, things are very costly. Let me tell you, whether things are costly or not, it has something to do with your getting married to the man, to the woman you want to marry to, because God who created the institution of marriage, know this very day that we are in now. He has seen that today things will be very costly in life. 
Do you know why one thing? Do you know one thing I want you to know? Jesus is omnisai God. The God you have is omnisai God. He knows the end from the beginning. Go and get married. By this word I have said, go and marry in the name of Jesus. 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 Time has not passed you. And then, no, no, let me tell you, you are no older than God who have said with him what is possible, what is possible in your life. Even right now, as I speak, even in this very critical issue of marriage, so say, so, oh, I'm 50 years. Let me tell you, even in this country, in your country, you see people around you, they got married. They say, Mary. that your miracle is today. That your miracle is today. Whatsoever that is debarring you not to get married, I confess it today, it is possible in your life, in Jesus' name. It's possible. Do you know in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 9, he says something I want to prophesy on you right now. He said, let us be glad and rejoice. As we confess the possibilities, the workability of our marriages today as believers in Christ, as also we confess the possibilities and the workabilities of our experiencing the marriage of the Lamb, Muraba Shantalaba. Let me tell you, it is possible for you. He said, Let us rejoice and be glad. Don't allow the world to confuse you in your life. Rejoice. Rejoice and be glad. He said, Pastor is bad. Rejoice and be glad. God is about to do what he knows best to do in your life. Let me tell you, oh, just manage, just manage, just manage to rejoice and be glad. Just manage. Just manage to rejoice and be glad. You will see what the devil is planning to do in your life. Let, let me tell you, there, there, there was no condition as worse as that of Christ on the cross of Calvary. Jesus did not look at the crucifixion. He did not look at the suffering. He managed, so to say. But you say he endured because of the glory behind the cross. Somebody is getting, is seeing the glory God has for him or her in this service today. Receive, see and receive the glory behind your cross cross today i want you to know that there is power in your confession confessing the words of god yeah. rejoice he said, be glad and rejoice. Be glad and rejoice. In that your conditions right now, in those your conditions that are trying to say, you are not going to leave. You will leave. You will leave. You know that. You will leave. You know that. Eleba shanta laboro kopo. Nika labo shanta laboro bobo. Ah, la kasa. I will leave and not die. Nothing is dead in my life. I, I want you to open your mouth and start confessing. Confessing, confessing. Whether the, the, the same confession, you, you have made a mistake, you are not confess. Confess. Or you are confessing the power of God, confess. 
Or you are confessing that with God things are possible in your life. I want you to go ahead and start confessing it. Rabo Sokopo Santalabo. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I will live. I will make it. Success is my own. In the name of Jesus, I will make it. In the name of Jesus, I will not die. Nothing is dead in my life. In the name of Jesus, no matter what the world is throwing at me, no matter what demons or satans, his ages throwing at me, they will not have effect in my life. In the name of Jesus, I believe the power of God. I believe the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He open your mouth and decree and declare God's own confessions in your life. In the name of Jesus. He I want you to open your mouth and say it is possible. With you, it is possible. With me, it is possible. Two people here on earth, according to Papa Abdul Bensi Dahosa, two people that are that things are possible with them. God and you. God and me. God and every one of us that is here today all things are possible with us open your mouth and decree and declare that all things are possible in your life all things are possible in your marriage life all things are possible in your business life all things are possible in your ministry all things are possible in your family all things are possible in the life of your children Malabo Soto. all things are possible with god all things are possible in the name of jesus with god all things are possible in my life with god God, all things are possible in my life. In the name of Jesus. Halabo soko po se talabo. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you for being together in this service today. As we close, I want you to know as you go about confessing the power of God, you will see the manifestation of the power of God in your life. As you go about saying, talking about the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you will see the manifestation of the Holy Ghost in your life, no matter what it is. Whatever it is, break through, open doors, open heaven. I say it is possible. So let me tell you, there's somebody here where your eye is. Your eyes, where they are, where they are focusing, your help is not coming from there. It's coming to the right direction. All that I want you to know, say right now, is to say, God, do what you know best to do in my life. Do what you know best to do in my life. I confess your direction in my life. I confess the manifestation of your direction in my life in the name of Jesus. I confess your breakthroughs in my life in the name of Jesus. God bless you. I bless you. I bless you, beloved one. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. But what is happening around you, don't look anywhere. Look unto God in the name of Jesus Christ. This year is a year of our Father. Our Father said it's a year that we have increased more and more. Papa Mungude said this year is a year of increase more and more. That is it. You do not know why? Because God told me this year is a year of global blessing. Let me tell you, God is not going to increase you more and more for nothing. Though. You are going to spread. You are going to break forth your fallow ground. This year, no devil will stop you. In the name of Jesus. People 
say they have limit. You don't have limit. Sky is not even your limit. Hallelujah. It's a year of increase more and more. Yes. For your what? Global blessings. Because there is global assignment in your life. God will perform it. In Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Reverend Dr. Monde Elidiame Adola, the senior pastor of World of Faith Bible Church International Incorporated. But coming Sunday, we are going to be at New Covenant Bible, New Covenant Gospel Church. New Covenant Gospel Church. Here in Abuja, anywhere you are in the world, you are in this service today, just look out for New Covenant Gospel Church. If there is none, look for a Bible-believing church. Don't stay at home so that devil will not bust into a corner and destroy your life in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let us share the grace of God together. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost. Be with us now and forever more. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of God forever and ever. That is our confession. Shalom. Shalom.